Hey, 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 this is Rosa, RCG Creations. How are you? Today I'm bringing to you a um, craft card. And this is a shaker card that I used this. Uh, it's from Shaker Die Templates, Sherry Lynn Designs. And it's K104 Birthday Cake Shaker Die. And that's what it looks like. And then there's the two dies. Let me put that out because I'm going to cut them out in a minute. But here's what the finished project looked like. So we're going to make one today. And then I went ahead and of course I did the double sided foam just for the depth. And then of course it's a shaker. And you can put whatever little seed beads and all that you want. And I got these little decorative flowers because I wanted to have some color let it pop. And then that's the inside of my card. And I went ahead and decorated the envelope also, just to give it a little, give it a little bit of a pop here, just something different. So let's get to making the card here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm first I'm going to go ahead and color the envelope just so to be already done with, and I'm just using, I have a little um, glass block. This is actually plastic, not glass. And I'm just doing, I'm just doing this at random. I'm not doing it in any special order whatsoever. And I'm using the classic Stampin' Up Pink Passion ink pad. Of course, use whatever color you have. And let's see. There's the top. I'm only going to do a little bit for to keep the video. Uh, I'm trying to stay within my 15 minute limit just so the video doesn't run too long and I'm just doing it all at random no basic order whatsoever make sure you, you press down evenly even pressure okay we'll take that one off put on let's do the little let's do the little tr trio of stars. Sometimes with these I like to add a little bit extra pressure just so it has a good impression. Don't forget to move your card around because you want those to be all at random because stars in real life are all in random. But now you get the main gist of what I'm talking about. And these little things are tiny little. So be careful. Make sure you've got your workspace and not a bunch of stuff on it. If you do, clean your area. Because otherwise you're going to lose these little babies. And these really kind of spruce up the card, the project. And see, when you, add, when you put it on there, you press on top. See how I didn't press as hard on that one as I did on this one? And that's so you want a good impression. That's one of the things you want to do with these little baby stamps. And again, I'm just doing things at random. Move it around. There. Nice and simple. Nothing major. And then I'm going to do the the front of the base card the same way but I'm just going to go at random and I'll bring you back on that in just a second okay I'm back now I'm going to do is cut my dies and I've got an A plate because I'm using my cuddle bug today my B plate my magnetic plate and then I have a piece of paper which is for my shim and this is my piece of plastic. It's just recycled packaging from any product that you purchase. Most of mine is my crafting supplies because I like to put all my um, my uh, dies and stamps in little uh, stamping pockets. So anyway, this is just recycled plastic. You could use this or you can use your acetate, whatever you'd like to do. So I am going to lay this on my plate and make sure that you can see everything, which I'm sure you can. And I'm going to lay this down. The 
bad part about this uh, clear tape, it's hard to see where you're at. So I'm going to lay this over my brown so I can really see it good. And then I personally like to tape it just because it can shift on you. <clears throat> oh, that's not going to be big enough. So let me... Here's the other half of the same sheet. And I'm going to get some tape. This is just washi tape. Just so it doesn't move. I'm just going to tape some down. Because I don't want it to move on me as it's going through the machine. And here's, let me get the other one. Let me lay this down. Oh, I got a piece, I got a piece of white fuzz over here. And let's see here. So let me get some more washi. And then I want to do the cutting side up on the cutting mat. So make sure your blade, the cutting part of, the, of your die is up. <coughs> oh, you know what? And I got to be careful because I don't want to waste this pet because I'm going to use this pet piece over again. You know, for Rosa. <laughs> okay. And there, I can do them both with the same pass. Oh, actually, no, it's not going to work. Not going to be big enough. I'll just do it as two separate passes. No big deal. We're good. Okay, so got my sandwich. I'm going to move my thing back. Let's put her in here. And you hear all that crackling noise? That is exactly what you want. That means the dye is cutting through your material in this case it's just clear plastic and this is what you want and guess there it is it's on there it cut straight through but because it's clear you're not going to be able to see it and where did it go <laughs> the whole thing came out but where did it go Oh, duh. Look, it's still stuck to there. See, so there it is. And of course the inside, the center came out. Just kind of tug a little bit if it's a little stuck. Because it will peel off. Just be careful not to rip it. I hope you can see that there. And throw this part away, you don't need it. But there's a whole piece now because I don't want to mess with these little candles and lining them up properly. I'm just going to trim it. But I need some dark brown. I need to get a background so I can see it. So I'm, I'm angling this over because I want to make sure I cut. I'm only cutting the candle parts, the candles off. I'm not touching anything else. And let me turn it around because I want I want a smooth even shape you're not going to be able to see it really very well because the uh, outside cover is going to show it but uh, OCD Rose is kicking in and I got to have all that to a certain extent I want it nice and smooth I know you can't see that very well but see there it is so I'm going to put this over here on my brown mat so I can see it okay now let me do this other one because this is the backer Get my sandwich back in. Feed it through. You didn't hear any crackling. At least I didn't hear any crackling. Nothing there. Make sure that it cut. Yeah, it sure did. Okay, so where did it go? Did I lose it? Well, where'd the piece go? It got cut off. It's not there. It all cut off. Okay, where did I... This is the one bad thing about acetate. It's because it's clear you lose it. Okay, I didn't go anywhere, so where did it go? Oh, duh! 
I did the exact same piece. Oh, I forget. I was supposed to cut this one. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> okay. Let me tape it back up. Let me line it up. There was it cut, but it was just there was nothing there to cut. <laughs> oh God. Hey, all right. We're human. Everybody mistakes, makes mistakes. We can laugh at ourselves about it. Okay, so I've got the plastic. It's on there. One more time. Let's get this done right. <laughs> okay, put my sandwich in. Now you should hear. Yeah, well, I was making sure that I had the cutting blades up. They do. Now you hear the cutting. That's why you didn't hear any cutting because there was nothing there to cut. <laughs> okay, very carefully now. There is a plastic. <laughs> and again, I want to cut the little candles off of that one. Because all I need is the bottom half. I don't need the top half at all. Okay. So take my washi. Put it back up a little handle. Because as long as they're sticky, I can still use it again. Which is what I will plan on doing. And this piece... I'm saving to, for the simple fact is this other piece there's nothing wrong with it and it's great for the small shaker cards that I do a lot of so that's able to be used and I'll put that I have a little hanging I have a little manila folder sitting right here next to my uh, where I keep my scraps my scraps are in hanging file folders and uh, I have a, a two fold two manila folders called acetate our windows, uh, shaker windows, and they're all different kinds, all different brands of plastic, recycled plastic. A lot of this is just the recycled plastic from my packaging of my products. And then there you go, there's the same one, but I can still use the second half of this one. So I'm going to just eyeball it, keep this, throw this one away. There, scissors, and we are basically totally done with the cuddle bug. So I'm going to put that down. Get my sandwich. Put all my trays back. I'm lucky enough that I have this little uh, three-tier rolly cart. I'm able to put my stuff up that's within easy reach. Okay, now let's cut off these. Here's where I messed up. I didn't need to cut this at all. This is what I waste. I only needed to cut this. There's where I messed up. Don't you don't don't do it. Don't do what I just did. Don't don't cut this. You only need to cut the solid piece, which is this piece right here. Okay. Oh, you know what? I don't. I do need a. I need my cuddle bug back because I need to cut my cardstock. But this is where you want to cut off. Let's hope you can see that. The end of the candles. So I'm going to put that over there. As long as it's on the brown, I can see it because it's shiny. I'll be able to see it. So let me get my brown. Let me get my cuddle bug back. Let me get my plates back. Okay. Because here is where you want to cut both pieces out of the paper. And I just got some old scrap white paper, recycled paper. You can use any brand. You want to have, you don't necessarily want it really thick, but you don't want it really, really flimsy either because you want to be able to have it take hold its shape. Okay, so now I am actually going to put this and line this up. And now this one I can do both at the same time. That's where I messed up. This is only my first time. Today was my first time of using this. Okay, I'll be with you in just a minute. Okay, I've gone back. So I got the two layered here. And because this, I want the cutting edge to be up. Because I want the cutting edge to go on my cutting plate. I don't really need this shim. I'm pretty sure I won't. 
but we'll see. I may mess this one up too. Okay, they're both in here. Just want to make sure they're in my cutting area. Now let me put it through. Let's wind her up. There we go. Yeah. You hear that cracking? That means it's working. So we should be good to go. And you see it all did cut, so we're totally fine. I don't need this anymore. Oh. Gonna move this. All this can go right back. Now what I'm gonna do is remember you always want to rotate your plates so you don't get a whole bunch of warpage. So the A plate. You can change it. You don't really have to, but this, I've only seen it on two actually live videos where the A-plate actually broke on them. So I do like to rotate it because I just don't want to, you never know, but better safe than sorry. So I am going to rotate. I started off this way, so I'm going to rotate it now. This one. Rotate this one. And rotate this one. I tend to always put my B and C plates the same so that way they're color because they're, they're color coded because they've got this little piece of uh, tape on here when they come from the uh, manufacturer. So that's what I that's how I know which side is what. So when I'm getting ready to do my next cut, I know it's already done because I always try to do this at the, when I'm done with the project for the day. So that way when I'm ready the next time it's already set and ready to roll. And then I get my extra plate and I've Fashion it the exact same way, so that way I know they're all exactly the same and it's ready to, the plates have already been rotated. Now just very, very carefully, it depends on the type of cardstock you're using, take off your uh, washi, and I will be putting that on the top of my, uh, the handle of my cuddle bug for the next use. Just remember, carefully take it off so you don't rip your cardstock, which I've been known to do by not paying attention and working too fast. Okay, so that we don't need. We throw this part away. Let me get my pokey tool. And... Just, I'm just going to poke one of them because that's all I need is one. And then the whole thing will slide right on out. So there it is. There's a top layer of that cake. And this already came out, so we're good to go. Nothing's there. So that's fine. To me, this is just scrap. It's not worth saving for me. I'm good to go. I'm throwing this whole thing away. But if you want to save it, feel free to save it. because I could save part of that because I, I like to do a lot of it with my Cricut. And I manually set it so that way I can use it, but it's not worth it for me right now. So I'm not going to do that. So now I'm going to color code. And I'm going to color this with my Spectrum Noir alcohol markers. And here they come. Here's, this is the cases. This is the old day. I haven't bought. This is like, shoot, several years old. Uh, in fact, let me see if it tells me what year they were done. Um, you know what it doesn't say sometimes they'll t put on there oh yeah here it is 2015 so there's a little code right there these were manufactured in 2015 so this is how long I've had them because I got these when they were brain spanking they had just come on the market okay and then do yourself a favor and I'm going to show you on the first card is I colored the outside with my markers, but I didn't do the bottom. And sometimes you can see it. In fact, right there, I'm going to show you. So I'm going to color. Always try, if you can, when you're doing the two-layer shakers or two layers of anything. If you can, color the bottom the same as the top. But uh, I did that in pink, and that's the other one in pink. But I'm going to think I'm going to spruce this up and come with a little bit different color. I've got pink. Let's see what's another one that goes good with pink. Pink and yellow for sure, because I'm going to do the yellow flame with the red in the center to make it look like it's a real candle and let's do the green 
Yeah, let's do, we're going to do soft jade. And here's my little samples. So, and then let's do the candles. Let's make the candles a little bit different color. Let's make the candles a little light blue. So let's do Moonstream. Because I'm, I'm doing soft colors. Because this is going to be for a lady friend. Okay, so shake up always on all your sparkle pens. And... Uh, you want to shake them and just got little BBs inside. Oh, and one thing I always remember. What, make sure you have the position on the right side that the candles are exactly the same shape so they go right on top. Because if you did it this way, that would be off. So keep that in mind too when you're doing items like this. Okay, so I'm only going to do the, the fl candle flame. So I'm going to do my yellow. And because these are alcohol markers, they will spread. Now, always don't forget, always do the sides of your cardstock because that will be seen and you wouldn't go all the way around it. So, make sure you color the edges and don't forget the little tips of color the entire cardstock. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing with this one, but I'm not going to be so so surprised, so precise on this. And then, as you notice, your uh, ink is starting to wear out. You just squeeze it where it says push, and that releases some more ink into the barrel. And again, don't forget the edges, and don't forget your tips, because remember, we're going to line this up, and if we don't get it exactly lined up, bright at this part will be seen because once it's gone there with the uh, the double-sided adhesive it is not coming off well not, unless you rip it and I don't want to do that let me give myself another little squeeze I like to do one squeeze at a time so I don't get too much liquid in my brush because that has happened uh, several times when I wasn't running get in a hurry and pay not paying attention Okay, there we go. That's good enough for that. Close this one up. Now this one is called Solar Red. And there's the Solar Red right there. So now I'm just going to do little strokes. Okay. But then I'm going to get my yellow. And then I'm going to smooth that out. And that alcohol is going to work in my favor by spreading itself around. But because I'm doing the yellow instead of the red, see it just makes the uh, flame so it's not so stark. And all I'm doing is I'm moving the color around. That's all I'm doing. Because in real life, candles are kind of glowy and stuff. I'm just going to bring this up so you can see. I want to get rid of this stark red right in here. Okay. And there you go. You just made some candles. Put my little things back up. Put them away. Now I'm going to do my... I'm going to do green. And I'm doing the green on the cake. So this is going to be the back. So I'm going to do the blue candles. And since this is going to a grown up, I'm going to make them all the same color. And don't forget, pick this up when you're done with this part. And don't forget to ink the edges. And so, there you go. And then ink up this edge. I like my nails. 
I colored them today. I painted them today. Okay, there we go. But I do see a little bit offness right here. OCD kicking in. OCD kicking in. And then I'm just going to go back with a little stripe. And it'll dry, but it'll dry a little bit darker on those areas. Just to give a little bit of accent on that candles. Something besides the plain Jane simple one. Simple little smooth candle. We're going to spruce it up a little bit. Now I'm, oh, I forgot to do my other candle. Let me get my blue. And then this is just going to be cut and dry, cut and simple. Nothing major on these. But don't forget, you definitely want to do the edges. So don't forget to do the sides, both sides. And flip the paper so you can see where you did both edges. This is off just a tad. Okay. And I'm not going to worry about the stripes on that one because they're never going to be seen. It's going to be covered right back up. So now I'll go into my green. And I'm, I don't need to do the whole thing. I only need to do the borders because the rest of it's going to be covered. Because as you see here, it's all going to be covered. So on this part, I only need to do the edges, but on here I'm going to do the whole entire thing. So, only because this is such a small piece, I'm picking it up and working. Normally I would just keep it on the table and work from there, but... And then don't forget, do your edges. So now you may get the main gist, and I'll finish the coloring project. Okay, went ahead and colored it, and I forgot, I misspoke a while ago. You need to color the entire page, because that's going to go on top. But you notice how this is a lot more smoother, and this is not. So I am going to go back, because I want a smoother look. So let me go back to my soft jade. And I went ahead and put that plastic liner, which is holding up for my shaker. All I did was add some wet glue all the way around it, and then I lined it up, and it's pretty much even. And you just let it dry. But while it's drying, I'm going to go ahead and color these little streaks, because I really want some more color to it. And I'm going to give myself some more juice because it's not wet enough for me. I like a, I want a lot more. Yeah, see how it smooths more, a lot more even. There you go. Sometimes it's just a little bit more liquid. Makes it go a lot better. And because I already have my acetate on here, I'm just going to be easy on the edges. So I'm going to turn this around so I can get, actually I can pick this up and I can smooth and ink my edges. Because in real life a cake, a pretty cake like this, especially one that's all shimmery, is all nice and professionally colored. That makes it look a lot more realistic. So let me... Just be careful when you're on the edges because you don't want to uh, ink your acetate. And all I'm doing is coloring. Get myself some more liquid. Make it smooth. Make it flow a little bit easier. And you can see the color go to the end of the brush. So you know, you know you have enough color on the tip of the brush. But see how much more smoother it is to color when there's more liquid there. And then let's do this side.
And then I'm going to turn this around so I can work on this side. And only because I already have the acetate on top. Excuse me, not on top. Added to the backing. And I don't want to get any green color on the acetate itself. And before you touch on that, make sure you don't have any ink on your fingers because I've done them before where it was still wet and they got color on another part. Ah. I just realized I didn't do the red on my. <laughs> I did it on this one, but I didn't do it on the top layer. So let me go back and I'll get my red. And. I'll finish off my flames of my candles. I mean, you could leave it yellow if you wanted to, but I kind of—I personally like the flame look of a real life candle. So I'm cover the edges here. I'm just doing little baby strokes. just because I don't want to mess up and have any go on the edges where that acetate is at. Fair. A lot more pleased with that. Let me pick this up because I can definitely go on the edges right in here. Give myself a second layer on the edges. Make sure that it's all green. Well, actually, this is called Soft Jade. There. That's done. Put this back away, but I'll I'll, put, I'll uh, somewhere in the video I'll put in there the colors of the colors that I'm using. Oh, put this away. I didn't really need to yet. I gotta get my red out. And actually, I'm using solar red. Is what I'm using. It's all I need but red, yellow too. So I'm just gonna do a, just a couple little stripes. Get my yellow, smooth it out, because this is alcohol. Just to give myself a little flame, and while it's still wet, so you kind of want to work really fast when you're doing something like this, because you want the alcohol to smooth in on the bottom layer. And I'm just going over and over and over and over and over. That's why when you're doing a technique like this, a better quality cardstock to begin with holds up a lot better and it doesn't tear up on you. And again, I'm spreading a little bit of the red over the flame with a candle to make it look so it's not so yellow yellow. And there you go. Oh, this goes here. This one goes here. OCD kicking in. I gotta put it back where it belongs. Put it to the side so I can let it show you the colors later on in the video. I'll have everything labeled. But there it is. There's that. Now I want to add the double sided foam. And I use this uh, really skinny double-sided from from Darcy. I like it because it's really thin layers, and on these, especially on these small shaker cards like this. And so you want to put it on top. I like to give myself a little bit of room. So, and then get yourself some Teflon coated scissors so it doesn't stick. And then press down. And then go all the way around and make sure you totally butt this all the way over to this. You don't want to go too far to the window because you don't want to be seen from the window. But you also don't want to be seen too far over on the edge because you don't want you don't want anybody to see the double-sided foam that's there. Okay, 
press that down. Use your little extra one. It's a little too much there, but that's okay. I'm actually going to put it over here. Because that was just big enough for that piece. Okay, I'm going to grab myself another piece. Sometimes when you do that, it comes off, but that's okay. You can actually put it right back on top. So here's my, make sure you're totally flushed against that other one. Bend it. Because you definitely don't want to get this on the acetate. See, that's a little too close. I'm going to bring this up so you can see that. See how that's still a little too close? So, be, and don't press down on it because you don't want it to get stuck. Just trim it. And see? But now you can't see it from the outside. So that's what you want to do. And this is such a minor piece. I'm just throwing this away. It's not worth the headache for me. i put it back up and lining it back away again. Okay, so now I'm going to go back here. Make sure I'm totally flushed. Flushed all the way against this other edge. And then totally against this edge. And then you're going to trim. And then I'm going to push this down with my fingernail to make sure that it goes all the way in there. And I don't want any loose pieces because uh, the shaker pieces, if they're tiny, or if you use the glitter shaker, which I have a lot of and I do love to do that, this will come right through that gap that's there if you don't get it totally flushed. So that's one thing with shaker cards is you got to get it totally flushed. So that means every single pit, corner is touching another corner. Again, one more time. All the way flushed. Push it all the way over. Let's press down so it sticks. And then cut. And there you go. One more time, all the way over, oops, I was too far to that edge, and that's just a little, actually that worked out good, look at that, you can't see it from the out front, but it just barely made it, see that, so that was very lucky there, okay, we'll get another strip, Okay, same thing. Flush it in the middle. Flush that out. Trim. When you're doing something this tiny and precise, these little nips, scissors, those tiny ones that are Teflon coated really work a lot better than the big ones. And I do have my big ones, which are these, but you see the difference? Big difference on being able to work with tiny things like this so it's a good idea to have a set of each one of the especially the Teflon coated ones because you just never know when you're going to be working with something sticky and everybody has their own favorite type of scissors but remember these tools are made for a reason and these are Teflon coated because they're made to be used when you're working with adhesive And the indention, when I bend it up, gives me a guide of where to trim with the, my fingernail on here. The indention that I give. And I'll show you in just a second. See, so here I'm pressing down. So I know there's just where, that's where I want to cut. Hope you can see that. See, I'm pressing down. And that's my indention right there. So I know when I pull this up just a tad. That is where I want to cut. But you see that? Look, I messed up. I laid myself a gap, so i got to fix that before I go any further. This is where these little odd pieces come into play. So I'm going to put this back. The backing paper is still there, so I won't lose it. And here's this little piece right here that I'm just going to stick and flush it. Actually, I'm going to put it right there. Actually, that other piece that I threw away, I should have saved it. 
really I should have saved it and I'm going to push this in here and I'm going to push it down I'm going to hold it for a second just because I want to make sure that it sticks which it will I'm just going to hold it for a minute and then because it's foam it'll come back to it'll come back to its shape but see I just covered up the gap and it's sticky so now I want to get my embossing powder because when you're working with shaker cards on the inside of the double sided foam it's all sticky here okay because that's just the excess glue that oozes out in the manufacturing of it so I always get some powder tap it on here and then with the this is one thing when you have the little bristles it's nice to do that and get inside every little nook and cranny of that so the shaker pieces as you're shaking them they don't get yourself some more powder get more powder and work yourself work 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 around it I was getting tongue-tied there <laughs> work around the shape of what you're using you don't want it on top of it here you just want it on the inside so as the shaker pieces are moving around they don't tend to stick and then because sometimes when they stick they're there they're not moving at all so you defeated your purpose of having a shaker card because the shaker card is made to have movement all the way all the time when it's being shaken around I'm just tapping up the excess because I want to make sure it's all, all the way around. Okay, and then I always like to do the whole filament, especially with the acetate because it's a better quality acetate versus this little recycled plastic because sometimes the shaker pieces will get static and uh, they'll stick to it. So, okay, come on. Some of these containers are really, they're great, and I like them. This is why I got these for shakers. And I like these because they're the little, I like the little twist tops, so this way you can put different kind. And as you can see, here's, I have all kinds of she, uh, shakers pieces, and here I even have sand you can buy this at the box stores. All different layers and thick uh, types of sand. This is like salt, but it's white, actually called white sand. So when you're making some beach themes, that's good to put that on the uh, on your car pieces or your scrapbook pages. Okay, so that's done. Now I'm going to lay this because I'm going to lay this when I was, once I take the backing off. I'm going to lay this on top. So I just want to get myself some color because I want color. And I want the top part, because these have a, a back and a front. So I want the top part. And I'm going to try to lay it as close to the center as possible. I don't want to overlap it. But I definitely want one of every color. There's a yellow one. And there's a peach one. Or orange. And a green one. Actually, you can't even see the green one. I'm going to leave that one out. I'll do another purple. And I'll do another red. That's enough, because this is a little bitty shaker card. You just twist that until it's closed and then that's it and you're done with those and that's all I'm gonna do on that part and these other shaker pieces are too big but you know what I kind of like this white sand just because I like the look and I know I totally enclosed and there's no gaps anywhere I think I'll be fine to go with this okay 
there's some sand caught in the groove of the twister. And that's just part of what that's part of sand. But I bet got a big mess. <laughs> and I'm just gonna lay it right here on top. Cause I just want it for accent pieces all. But I wanted to show you what I was talking about. The sand is pretty to work with shaker cards or beach themes. And I love to put it on scrapbook pages. You know, of your trips and stuff. If you went somewhere where there was beach or sand. Because it gives you a nice visual effect. And some people even collect sand from the trip where they were at. So that's a nice way to preserve your item. And put it on your scrapbook page with the rest of your photos. Okay, so I'm going to clean this up a little bit later after the video is done. So now I'm good. Oh, I forgot. I need to put some little seed beads in here because I want some this is another little trace which are really, this is another little container. Uh, I don't even remember where I got this. I think this was like at a box store, I think. Oh, no, you know what? I got these from Jen Evers at Quality Crafts, K-O-A-L-A-T -A -A Crafts, C-R-A-F-T-S. She's got a YouTube channel. Check her out. Her name is Jen Evers. She's got a great, she, she sells uh, brand new and slightly used craft items. Oh, I'm opening from the wrong end. Okay. And these don't really seal. They just kind of close. But I just want to put a couple of these in here just so there's more of a shaker movement and I don't want to take away from the focus of the flowers but I want more more of a shaker mechanism and I don't want to use my big ones because they're going to be too big because I did not you could you could do double layers of foam to make it thicker but I didn't do that I just want a few shaker pieces. I don't want a lot. I think that'll work. Okay, so now we're going to take the backing off. And so I'm going to take all this backing and I'm going to lay it on top. See how easy it just comes right off? And I don't really have overly long nails. But I'm also going to show you, see how that's got that white filament for the powder on the plastic cover? And here's that little piece that was odd. So that's just a plastic backing on that one. Just hold it with a piece there. Okay, come on. I need to give myself a little hold it with all my fingers. Because all you want to do is take the backing off so you expose the adhesive. And there we go. All the adhesive is gone. I like to just put it through the shimmer so I could see the all the adhesive is gone on all the layers and even the little odd bob one right down here see that and then I'm just gonna line them up and bear with me excuse my head if it's in the way but I'm gonna line it up as close as possible And then you press down. Once you're pretty sure it's lined up pretty good. Ah, oh, I forgot. I forgot to put my foam on the candles. Let me get my piece of double-sided foam here, and I'm gonna just cut a little snip. Because you don't want you want the candle to. Luckily, they're flexible, so it's okay to do this this way. 
This is not the way you want to do it, but ah, sticking to my nail. <clears throat> Okay, so next time, do this before you put it together. And then you want to just stick it on there. Uh, 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 cut a little piece. And it doesn't really matter if you put it on the top layer or the bottom layer. It's totally up to you. And then just line it up. Put it there. Cut a little piece. Got it over here, which is the one, this one, didn't have it. Okay. Now just release the back. Well, actually this one needs more. The little piece was too small. I put this back here on this one. There we go. Now I'm just going to release my backing. Release the backing on this one. And then this last one. FYI, do this first before you put them together. There, there. Just let it stick for just a second. There we go. And see, now it's all layered and it's all even. And there's your shaker pieces. There's a little bit of sand coming out. That's pretty typical because there was sand all over the place. So, But after a minute, it'll go away. And then you can see the little shaker, the little beads, and then the little flowers. You see how that one's stuck right there? Right, this one over here is stuck. See, but now it, you just shake it. I didn't, I bet you it's stuck because I didn't put enough powder and it's sticking to the adhesive, but that's okay. The rest of it's still working. So now I'm going to get my glue. I ended up broke my needle, and I cut the tip. It came out the hole. Was trying to get my pliers to take it out, the, just the top layer needle, but the whole thing came out, and it's like, oh no! So, I'm still using my glue till it's empty. But I actually like this little size. It's easy to work with, so I'm going to keep it here on my desk anyway. And then I'm going to use these, and I'll show you in just a minute how I don't. There's no needle. I don't. I have no more extra needles. I had thought I had them, but I've already used them all. Because sometimes the little needles, uh, if you don't twist it when you take it off after it's it's dry, it gets stuck. So I'm using the excess glue and let that be the stopper, so this glue in here doesn't dry up. And then now I'm going to line her up. And I don't care if I go over any impressions because it doesn't really matter. Okay, that's good enough for me. Push down just a little bit, not too much, just enough so adhesive sticks. Now it's all moving. See? We're good to go. There's the shaker. Now let me do the inside message. Okay, I'm going to be stamping the inside of my message. And this is the one time it pays to have a stamping tool. Especially when you're going to do repetitive cards with basically the same items. And I'm just inking up my ink, my clear pads. Put it in my stamping tool. It's already lined up. And I know this is the front of the card. This is the top. So I know I'm good to go. 
and apply some pressure and if for some reason if it doesn't work out you get to reposition it right back in the exact same spot as it was and you see that have a turned out good but wonderful okay I'm back I went ahead and colored ink excuse me not colored inked the wonderful over again and I'm going to just show you this stamp it's got little ridges on it let me here it is this is the little pockets I was telling you that I put this I store these in but see that here's the word solid but here it is this is what it looks like so it's meant to look that way but this all the words that I'm using are all in here this is from hero art stamp and cut uh, item number DC 214 okay anyway that is the end of this card move this out of the way so here's the front of the card and there's the message here's my little envelope that matches it and here's my original just for a different look different effect and there you go thank you so much for watching we we'll catch you in the next video don't forget to hit like comment and share and we catch you the next one. Have a great day. Goodbye.